This is about rising sea levels. As Earth warms, sea levels will start rising in the next decades, few decades ahead. Perhaps as little as 30, 40, 50 years, sea levels will start to rise and will start flooding many coastal cities around the world. Especially with increased bigger hurricanes and stronger storms and storm surges. As the climate changes or global warming increases or speeds up, there will be more and more disasters on a massive global scale. So, what to do? Many cities around the world that are vulnerable to flooding or the rising sea levels because of the North and South Pole melting because of global warming and increase in global temperatures which are still increasing at an ever faster rate or pace. What to do then? Well, it takes approximately 30 years lead time, about 30 years, to get coastal defenses built. In other words, you need a certain amount of time to get it built. And then you're going to have to spend money. People are going to have to come up with the money to build these coastal defenses to protect cities like New York City or Miami or Baltimore, L.A., San Francisco, what's left of New Orleans, or any of the cities around the world, or even in America, the United States, that are sitting on the coast, that have significant infrastructure. We're talking about billions and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars at stake, and millions and millions of people who live in these big, great big cities. What happens as a sea level around the world rises one foot, perhaps two feet, perhaps even more than that, three feet and more, as time goes by, as the years and decades to come, or in the years and decades to come. It's not really that far off. Is there any planning being done? What could be done? Does everybody have to start moving out of the big cities that are on the coast, coastal areas? Because the sea levels, they are going to rise. This is a guarantee. It is also important to note that even if all cities are well protected against extreme events, large-scale city flooding may remain a frequent event at the global scale because so many cities are threatened and because protection is not fail-safe. As a consequence, even assuming that protection levels will be high in the future, of course that's going to be hard to do with the world economy or the U.S. economy in recession or depression or any other thing, the large exposure in terms of population and assets is likely to translate into regular, yes, regular city-scale disasters at global scale. like once, every, once a year, or once every few years. No, we can't lose cities. A city, a great, a big city that sits on the coast every year or two. No, that's not going to work as they get flooded or the sea levels, sea levels rise. So, this makes it essential to consider both adaptation as well as what happens when ad adaptation, especially defenses, fail. There is a need to consider warnings and disaster response, as well as recovery and reconstruction strategies, including foreign aid, in order to minimize as much as possible the long-term consequences of the coming disasters. For cities with large areas at or below mean sea level, flooding can be catastrophic, as they can be permanently permanently flooded, as illustrated in New Orleans. 
Only defense repair and pumping can remove the flood water. Where cities remain in these areas, the residual, residual risk needs to be carefully evaluated and defense and drainage systems carefully reviewed, starting now, not, not off into the future. Anyway, this issue is likely to grow in importance through the 21st century. However, putting into place effective disaster management strategies like rising sea levels and major cities that are becoming vulnerable, land use practices and protection investments will take time. Yes, it takes time. Previous defense projects like the Dutch Delta project have shown that implementing coastal protection infrastructure typically has a lead time of 30 years or more. The inertia, the socio-economic response suggests the action must begin today, right now, to protect port cities and to manage flood risk for impacts expected at least, if not sooner, by the middle of this century. The concentration of these risks and a few of the world's great cities and nations underscores the urgent need for leadership and attention in these locations. Such action could inform effective management responses, a knowledge base that could help to advance action in many other locations in the coming decades as the sea level rises because of global warming, which it will. It already started. It's already started. And it's going to get worse. Why? Because global warming is real. And it's speeding up. Over time, the sea level could rise quite a bit, actually. Many cities around the world, including in America, yes, could be flooded or be underwater before the end of the century. This is never a sign the end times, last days, whatever you want to call it. Well anyway, yes, and there are many signs. Day by day, the end times become more evident. <laughs>